Welcome to the Keeping in the Nostalgia Live show. I am your host, Billy Powell. Today with us is newly Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame inductee, Coach Gary Duncan. Coach Duncan, thank you so much for joining us and uh, spending a little time with us and helping to keep the nostalgia alive. And congratulations on uh, the honor that's just been bestowed on you. Well, thank you very much, Bill. It, it is quite an honor, and uh, I feel very privileged to be where I'm at. Who, uh, who, who gave you the phone call? Well, I got a, a phone call probably <clears throat> two or three days before it was actually uh, official uh, from Steve Brett. I used to be the coach at uh, Bloomfield. And then I got another call from uh, Sam Alford then uh, on Sunday after it was uh, announced. And uh, so I've been getting quite a few of them late, lately, but uh, most of them just congratulatory. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, it's um, uh, hard to keep your tongue quiet when you found out and you can't tell anybody, isn't it? It really was. I mean, I, I, you know, you get to the age you don't sleep as well as you used to. And sometimes I move from the bed to the lazy boy and I got my phone beside me there, you know, and it uh, seemed like about 4.30 that morning, uh, I guess the report was going out to the, to the press and the radio stations and things of that nature. And it popped up on my phone. Well, needless to say, I couldn't go back to sleep after that. <laughs> And this past weekend, you were celebrating a, a 50th anniversary of your high school, correct? Well, it wasn't my high school. It was my first coaching, varsity coaching job at Salem, Indiana. And that was actually supposed to have been last year because of COVID, we couldn't do it. So they had it this year. And uh, so that was my, actually my first varsity coaching job at Salem. Uh, tell us about uh, the weekend. Well, it was great. I mean, I uh, I've seen the kids that I hadn't seen for uh, probably 25 years. Uh, uh, the uh, Salem High School uh, put together a, a nice banquet room for us, and uh, we had a uh, good visit, uh, saw a lot of old friends, and uh, really had a good time with the uh, players at that time. And uh, we, unfortunately, we lost one player during that time, but uh, it, it was a great time. And uh, have you talked to have you talked to uh, Coach Reinhardt? I have not uh, since uh, he he called me and did congratulate me on my induction or my uh, being accepted. And uh, I haven't uh, spent much time. I listened to his interview with you uh, a few days ago, which I enjoyed very much. But uh, uh, he was my idol. He was uh, kind of one that set me on my course. Uh, He's my coach for two years in high school and uh, uh, just made a great impression on me. Tell us more about Coach Reinhardt. Well, he, he was uh, cocky, <laughs> you might say. Uh, and uh, I watched him play a, a good baseball player. He played baseball at IU, of course. And uh, we used to have around Oakland City and the surrounding communities, which had what they call a deer trail league. Uh, kind of like a similar people that's out of college uh, get together and play on Sundays. And I remember watching him play uh, several games and uh, uh, just very impressive, very knowledgeable when it comes to the game of basketball. Uh, he could motivate kids, which was, uh, I think, his biggest asset to me, which is the fact of his, his uh, motivation abilities. Uh, remind everybody, too, you went off and played uh, college ball. Where did you play college ball at? I played in my hometown there at Oakland City College, which is now Oakland City University. And uh, one of the things that uh, was kind of unusual at that time, my high school football coach, uh, Delbert Chief Dissler, uh, was my uh, college basketball coach my first uh, year at uh, Oakland City University. And he, uh, he did that. He split time between the high school and the uh, university or the college. And uh, so uh, he's actually the one to give me my scholarship. I got to tell everybody it's not uh, what you know sometimes, it's who you know. And he gave me the chance to play some college ball. And, uh, and then, of course, he was only there approximately, I think, a uh, year and a half. And uh, he became the superintendent at uh, Oakland City High School there, in Oakland City Community Schools. And at that time, my head coach was in uh, Willis Simpson out of Providence, Kentucky. And uh, uh, he started the track program, which I done a little track in high school. And he said, Gary, have you ever tried to throw a javelin? Well, of course they didn't have a javelin back in uh, 
in uh, high school days in Oakland City, so I picked up the javelin and uh, done quite well at that uh, uh, at Oakland City College. How hard was it, or when did you decide that you wanted to go into coaching? Well, like I said, I think uh, Reinhardt had the biggest influence to me on that, uh, and playing college ball helped. Uh, being around, uh, I was always competitive, uh, no matter what I did, and uh, it was just uh, a feeling that I felt like it uh, something I could be successful at, and I, I just pushed forward in that uh, in that area. You know, I think you're the only person that I've had on the program that can throw a piece of chalk at a chalkboard and disintegrate it. Uh, have you talked to Todd Yoakum? <laughs> That's one of his favorite favorite stories. Uh, I, I, he could probably tell you the game. I couldn't even tell you the game or the situation. But uh, you know, I uh, I had my ways of motivating. Uh, maybe would be very acceptable today, but. Uh, the kids accepted those ways and uh, didn't wasn't offended by it. Uh, one of the main things I always try to impress on kids: uh, anything I say or do to you, it's not personal. You know, don't take it personal. It's there for motivation, uh, encouragement, uh, and your improvement. Our high school basketball coach was the same way. I don't think any of his methods would have been acceptable today, but. Uh... Um, uh, he molded and shaped just like you did, uh, uh, lots of young men into, um, um, into what they are today. So he, he meant a lot to him. So I'm sure that's the same way with, uh, your former players. What, um, what's it like being a coach in Indiana high school basketball? Is there like get your first job that you just, uh, went back for the 50th anniversary? Um, you know, are, are you always kind of, is, are so, is someone looking for you to go to your next job? Are you always looking for another job? Were you happy where you were at, at jobs until you got, of course, to Southridge for so many years? Well, I never really went looking for a job. Like I said, uh, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Sometimes I got my first teaching job at West Washington. Uh, I played ball with a boy by the name of Eddie Tyre and his dad was the, uh, uh, the president of the school board in the West Washington School Corporation, Kermit Tower, he was a doctor. So uh, it was very easy to get my first job with that type of influence. And so I was West Washington for two years. And then uh, the principal at West Washington by the name of Joe Geely uh, became the principal at Salem, Indiana, uh, which is in the same county as uh, West Washington. And he said, uh, Gary, would do, we'd like for you, I'd like for you to come to uh, Salem with me. And I started at Salem as a uh, assistant football coach under Paul Jolly and uh, head uh, boys track coach. And uh, so I was there not because of what I'd done, maybe at West Washington. I just made an impression on Joe Geely, uh, the principal, and he wanted me to come with him. So uh, that's where I ended up at Salem. And uh, he died uh, before I actually got the, the uh, basketball job at Salem. But uh, he, he was the reason I got there. And, and what was your next step after New Salem? Well, uh, from Salem, then I ended up, uh, I was there two years as varsity coach, and I wanted to get closer back to uh, Oakland City and one thing or another, my wife's hometown, and uh, her parents lived there, my parents lived there, and uh, I just maybe felt more comfortable in, uh, around Gibson County. So um, I was headed back to uh, Salem before we'd even decided about this. And uh, the uh, principal at uh, Southridge at that time was Hall of Famer Ray Raisner. And I'd done my student teaching under Ray Raisner when he was head basketball coach at uh, Princeton, Indiana. And so uh, I heard that the assistant's job, assistant basketball coaching job and uh, teaching open was open. So I called Ray and uh, he set me up with an interview. And uh, of course, the head basketball coach at that time was Hall of Famer Joe Todrang. And uh, I remember Joe playing at Oakland City. And I was just, he's about six years older than I was. And I was just a, uh, a little tot back then. But I used to run down the hill from my grandparents' house down to the gymnasium there and watch him play. And uh, so I knew, I knew these people very well. And of course, the, the job was there as an uh, assistant basketball coach, which is kind of unusual going from a varsity job to an assistance job, uh, uh, but uh, that didn't bother me. I was in the area that I wanted to get to. And so uh, 
they hired me and I was assistant under uh, Joe for two years and uh, Jerry Allstott uh, for three years before I got the uh, varsity job. You know, the past few nights we were talking about how you were kind of, you know, a little bit sleepless before you uh, went and you got the call to uh, that you're going to be inducted into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame and uh, uh, you've had uh, uh, congratulatory um, calls from several people. Uh, but do you think about the back-to-back -back final fours all the time and what, what you would do different or, you know, how exciting of a time it was, you know? Well, you know, I, uh, you know, I got to go back to Salem, Indiana. If it hadn't, it hadn't been for that bunch, you know, that got me to the uh, center state that year, uh, you know, would I have been where I'm at today? Uh, I, I felt those kids, and I told them that, uh, that this past week or so when we was back for our reunion, that uh, without that foundation, uh, who knows where, where I would have ended up, you know, but I knew, but I had good name recognition when I moved to Dubois County because that's where we had won uh, the regional, beating Jasper in the final game in 1971. And so Dubois County, knew of me and uh, knew what we had accomplished uh, when I was at Salem. And uh, uh, so I give those kids a lot of credit. Now, as far as the uh, rest of it's concerned, uh, you know, the, the final four team was probably the culmination of uh, the highest point of my uh, career. But in between that, uh, we won, uh, I think seven sectionals. We just didn't have any luck getting out of the regional. But uh, we were we were competitive each year in this sectional, and and the sectionals were probably I can go back when I was in high school. We never had any success, but the crowds in uh, Princeton sectional were much like the crowds in New Boys County at uh, Huntington Memorial Gym. They're just they're just tremendous. Uh, they had good good fan support, and the enthusiasm is just out of this world. And I think many times the reason we didn't have such success in the regionals is that. When you got to that sectional, you felt a lot of relief, and maybe you just didn't, uh, you just didn't, uh, wasn't quite the same as it was uh, in that regional, had, had, had it, as it been in the uh, sectionals, and that was just uh, those two sectionals I were involved in, and even even Salem sectional, uh, we ended up beating Corden in a double overtime game on a last second shot, and uh, those atmospheres are just things you don't forget. Well, since you've been getting so many congratulatory calls, we thought we'd have a special guest here today to uh, um, give you another one. And uh, we should see him on the screen here in just one second, Coach. Okay. And you're going, hmm, who is it yes. going to be? I sure, I sure am. I, I got a lot of things in mind, but uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. Also, too, you know, basketball is such it's so close knit uh in you know that part of the state why is that when it when it comes to um uh basketball it, it like in other parts of the state it's not as close knit as it is in that part of the state well and, and uh you know i listened to your interview with dave warlin uh back years ago hi todd hi uh, coach <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like groucho Marx. this is your life <laughs> it is but, uh, you know, Dave was very good at uh, helping people. Joe Toadrank was very good at helping people. Uh, one of my best friends right now is John Church, uh, who coached at uh, Dubois. He went uh, up to, uh, home with me both times at, uh, at Rick uh, uh, on Patbrook spoke for me. But, uh, you know, it is a close to that community. We used to meet at uh, a place in... Uh, Washington called Hillies. Uh, Pike Central coach was there. Warland was there from Washington Catholic. Todorank was there. I was there from uh, uh, Southridge, and uh, we get together. And it was just a, a uh, you were very competitive when you played one another, uh, but you were always friends when the game were over. It was over, and, that, and that's important. So we have Todd Yoakum with us, and Todd Coach had informed me before we started the interview that he was just too good looking to be on camera, but you can hear him. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's true. That is true. A little bit of a uh, uh, Bruce Willis look with the head, you know, shaved head going on. 
for there you go. <laughs> it's just old age. <laughs> Todd, I was just telling him about uh, he may be the only person I've interviewed that can disintegrate a piece of chalk into a chalkboard. I've seen that happen live. Yeah, that's true. It's like poof and it's gone. Uh, what is such, what's such a great honor for uh, Coach Duncan being inducted into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame? Do you agree? Uh, absolutely, 100%. Um, you know, I don't know what you guys have talked about so far, but I, you know, this process has been going on, I don't know, maybe five, 10 years, maybe a while. And, um, you know, I heard about it a long time ago and, you know, obviously have a biased perspective, but from, you know, what coach did for Southridge and Southern Indiana basketball is just incredible and, and very deserving and thrilled for him. Hello? Yep, we're here. We're here. Uh, 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 coach Duncan, uh, just like I said, you know, the Groucho Mark show, this is your life. We got someone else that would like to come in and uh, congratulate you also. Wow. Okay. Okay. You're like going through that Rolodex. Who's it going to be this round? <laughs> I'm looking. There we go. There's my point guard. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome Rick Patberg. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good. Uh, I just want to let you know, I already told Todd, uh, you see Todd on there. That, uh, uh, Coach you, had uh, let us know at the beginning that he was just way too good looking to uh, be on camera, but he's on, he's on with us with audio. Hey, Coach, how are you? Bye, great. Great seeing you too. Nice seeing you. Coach, are hearing your voice, I guess I should say, so. <laughs> um, uh, Rick and Todd, I'd like you to tell one of your uh, favorite stories of Coach, if uh, you, you got one there in your mind that can come up uh, uh, pretty quickly. Rick, go ahead, but be sure to leave me some time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, there's quite a few stories. I guess um, probably the biggest story is, <clears throat> I would say, we like. We, we visited uh, coach coach's hometown with the Wood Memorial Trojans and my twin brother and I, I know Ron's trying to be on here, but Ron and I performed very poorly uh, that evening. And, and when I say poorly, wasn't good, you know, and coach had enough gumption to take us out of the game and sit us for pretty much the whole entire game. And um, as a, as a learning tool, um, the game got very close at the end and, he inserted Ron and I to, to have some, uh, I guess, get, a, get us an opportunity to grow as players to come in and shoot free throws. And of course, Ron and I proceeded to shoot free throws very poorly that night as well. We ended up winning, which is really nice, but certainly a growth experience of, hey, you know, you got to a, play better and B, we still count on you to, you, you know, come in and do your thing. But certainly after the game, uh, it was certainly an entertaining post game. Uh, entertainment for for everybody in terms of coach getting on Ron and I, but certainly a, a, a growth opportunity for us. And that's just one of, of many I could go on. I, I ha hadn't had much time to think about it, but that's real, a, a real quick one. So, you, know, I, you, you mentioned that game and I can remember that game. I can remember you being right in front of the bench and you dribbled the ball off your foot out of bounds <laughs> with, no, with no defense on you. Yeah, it wasn't a very good night. I remember <laughs> that. So. That's great. Um, so this is kind of one just small story and it's it's relevant this time of year because the way coach had set up our schedule every year, we play seven or eight games through about this point in December. We usually play Jasper about, about today or next week. But then from before Christmas till January, or in January we'd have games every Friday and Saturday night in that period of time, um, we he used it to get us in shape and the drill and we'll use the word drill loosely is when we had to run w's is what i remember them called where we'd run up and down every stairway in the big gym and that would be our conditioning that in, for that entire um that entire two-week period to get us ready for the the january and february big run um the other thing i wanted to mention and this isn't really a story but you know, we always, we're talking about, you know, coach taking Rick and Ron out or coach shattering chalk on the chalkboard or, you know, there was a story about the boot through the floor as well. Um, I think the one thing, though, that I always take with me, and I, I know Rick does because we've talked about this in our coaching, 
that was sort of before the time when, you know, it was commonplace for coaches to say they really cared about their players, you know, players coach stuff. And I think one thing that we all took away from it was, you know, coach loved us and he cared about us as people off the court and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's the thing that, that many of us carry with us. And, and honestly, that's the thing why we played together so well. And I think why we won a lot of games is because that, there was a family atmosphere and, you know, he cared for us. We cared for him and we cared for each other. And that, that paid off and showed on the court. You know, both in 85 and 86, um, our, our athletic director at brought up a high school um, who played for Branch McCracken at Indiana University, Gene Ring, uh, would have extra tickets or have tickets for the final four. And of course, in both 85 and 86, you know, 86, we made it to the regional finals. Of course, 85, you know, we, we lost in the sectional Hinkle. But uh, I got to come down and uh, watch you guys in the final four. What what kind of a experience was that uh, for you guys? And, um, uh, you know, uh, coach, handle, how did you handle going there the first time? What How did you calm the kids? And uh, 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 guys, tell me a little bit of story about your final four experiences. Well, to me, it was just a matter of, uh, of not being scared, knowing who you were playing, you know, that uh, when you had uh, – Edwards and Jones were both Mr. Basketballs. Uh, they were they were young like we were. Uh, basically, I mean, I know they had some seniors because we had no seniors in '85, and so it was. Uh, to me, it was going to be a building block. You know, you wanted to leave there with a certain amount of respect and uh, confidence uh, for the next year. And uh, you know, we we struggled. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Uh, we were outmanned. Uh, we were out quick a little bit, and uh, and I think uh, the, the atmosphere, we didn't shoot the ball very well. Uh, so uh, I think we did a little bit better the second year, but uh, that was uh, my, ass, my attitude going into the, the uh, first year, 85, with a, with a bunch of underclassmen. In terms of, of, of the, the, the uh, experience, I mean, Hoosiers came out about the same time, you know, this, uh, our, our little run occurred. And, you know, if you can take that movie and, and it, it, most people got an, a sense of what Indiana basketball was, that was truly the experience. I mean, I, I, I talk about it right now. I still get chills down my back from the whole experience of, of that Final Four run and that the trip to Market Square Arena, just the whole experience was was uh, was wonderful and, and, and fabulous. It, it was great to spend it with, you know, all your good friends, as Todd said, we were great friends and what a great, great way to do it. And uh, certainly we didn't perform at the at the state championship like we wanted to, but the whole ride there in essence was 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 fantastic. It was wonderful. Yeah, I echo all that stuff. And, and, and to me, you know, what are we 34 years later? there's no shame in losing to perhaps the greatest teams ever to play basketball in single class basketball in Indiana. And you agree with that. (laughs) Yeah. I think kind of what you learned in 85 was, (laughs) yeah, these guys are pretty good. We got some work to do. And in 86, you know, we got off to an atrocious start, but that turned into a game and we competed and we did everything we could possibly do to win. And, you know, I think, all of us would agree we just weren't good enough. Uh, but, you know, that still is one of the – even though we lost, it's one of the greatest sports moments of my life. I mean, I don't I – don't, I think probably none of us have ever played in front of that many people, ever. You know, cumulatively since then probably. So it was a great experience, and, you know, it kind of teaches you there's always somebody out there that's probably better than you, but you just got to get back to work. That was funny. Sorry, coach. Talking about that, you know, he coach did a wonderful job of 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 getting us ready for opponents. I mean, Todd talked about the love and care that coach had on the human side, but from a basketball standpoint, you wouldn't find a better coach in terms of getting prepared, getting you ready to play the next game, getting just ready for the season. And we already were reviewing tape of teams in the state finals that we could face before we even played in the semi state. We watched Michigan City. If Todd, you remember, we watched Michigan City Rogers play. We thought Michigan City Rogers was going to be the team we probably would face in the state championship because we believed yep. we'd be there. We <clears> truly <throat> did. 
you know, that's one thing coach instilled in us is that we believed in ourselves immensely. And so we watched Michigan City Rogers play. We got on the bus, had the ride up 64 home, and you go back, and that's that was Hoosiers all over. You turned around and looked out, and it was a miles back, our, our ride back home. It was unbelievable. Yep. And we heard Michigan City Rogers got beat by Marion. We started celebrating. Honest to God, we were like, yes, we are not playing Michigan City Rogers. That Monday morning, we put tape in a Michigan of Marion, and we went, "Oh no, <laughs> I think we've got the wrong opponent." <laughs> As Todd said, we were, and, and Coach will tell you, we were pretty much outmatched every position. And you know, I, I would say that you know we had a strong belief in our our team. And if I would send a message to any kids, that's one thing that we probably didn't have the first time we played with Marion. We did have that fear, as Coach said, that we looked at across, and they were they were good. They were just a, a better team across the line from us. And we had that fear probably for the first time in our career that we said we wouldn't, wouldn't be able to beat them. But again, just, you know, a nice experience. Another nice story about leading up to that, that tournament. Sorry, coach, I interrupted you. So that's okay. But uh, you both hit the nail on the head. It was, uh, it was experience like I, I never had before. You know, I'd been to the center state. Of course, we got beat with the super Hicks in 71 when I was at Salem. Uh, and they had uh, uh, number one draft, not draft choices, but uh, major uh, major college uh, players. And Hale went to Kentucky. Stella Berger went to Wake Forest. And uh, we were kind of in the same situation at that time. We just didn't uh, get out of the semi state. So uh, we saw a lot of good ball players sometimes, a lot of good uh, teams. Uh, and most of them we lost to it when we got to those levels of no disgrace. And uh, just happy for the experience. and. Uh, for the kids, for me, for the community, because uh, it's something they still talk about when you see them. Everybody, uh, you know, I've got so many congratulatories for the Hall of Fame, but they uh, they mentioned uh, 85, 86, you know, those, those years stick in their, uh, especially under the one class system, they, they stick in their minds. What do you all think of Indiana high school basketball today? Uh, well, you know, I, I like the one class system. I, I, I just soon see two classes instead of five, you know, I, I just think it'd be, uh, but I can understand the smaller schools. I mean, they, they're getting, uh, recognition, they're getting some success, they're winning, uh, uh, state tournaments and things like that. They, they would probably never, they would never win in a one class system. And so, uh, I can't fault people for wanting the, uh, class system. But in my own mind, uh, having played and coached in the one class system and success we had, it was, uh, uh, you can't beat the way it used to be. Yeah, you know, I got back a few times to watch a few games over the past, you know, 30 years and it, it certainly is different now. And, and I'm not gonna blame all that on the class system. I guess where I stand is, you know, there is no other situation I would have rather played in even knowing the outcomes now, the single class Indiana basketball. Agreed. I mean, that our my stance is the same as the other our other guys here. I, one class system, you can't beat it. Um, I would my, I would not take our trip for a, a state championship as a a two A or a three A champion. We probably could have been that maybe three years in a row, honestly. But I would not pass up the experience we had and where we ended up in the one class system. Yep. How often do you guys, all you guys pop in? I know I'm going to date people by saying a VCR, but uh, Todd has done a really nice job of getting everything out on uh, uh, digital. Uh, but uh, how often do you take a peek at those games and uh, just kind of reminisce? So this is funny. Uh, my boys are into the NBA, so they'll talk about, you know, shooting and all this stuff. And I'll just, I'll go to the YouTube and I'll get the, uh, the tapes of when we played and I'll just send it to them and said, Hey, that ain't nothing. Just go watch this. And obviously it's a little bit different, but you know, I don't, I don't watch it, but I certainly think about those games this time of year often yearly more than, you know, monthly, probably. I, you know, personally, I don't, you know, go out and watch it, but as Todd said, I, my kids as well as I, I, I coach as well. And so the uh, you know, some of my, my families that I coach, <laughs> know who I am and know Indiana basketball. So they'll pop in what Todd's done. Actually, Todd, you've been a 
hero getting them out there. Now they'll, they'll get a kick out of seeing our teams play and stuff of that nature. So you have that, which is nice, but personally don't watch it too much. Uh, have a lot of the memory up here in terms of all the games and stuff of that nature. Cause again, it was certainly a great experience. Well, I'm the same way. I, uh, I'm not, uh, big on computers or YouTube. Uh, I'd have to go pick it, pick the, uh, VCR tape out and put it back <laughs> in, which I have still have plenty of those. And, uh, uh, I don't know if they're still good or not, but, uh, I'm like, uh, the boys there, you know, you think about it and, uh, don't think about as much as you used to but when people bring it up to you you know it's still in a lot of the people in the community's mind and that's uh more important to me than uh going back and watching a replay or or something of that nature but uh just the fact that uh, so many people got to share that experience and uh, enjoy it uh means more to me than going back and watching them you know, I was talking to Coach before I uh, put you, both of you gentlemen on, and uh, I asked why why basketball in that part of the state is so close knit. I mean, uh, you think Indianapolis would be close knit? It's not. You you know, the uh, up, up in northern Indiana, but you, you guys have a. I, it, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like uh, people. I guess maybe uh, family and fans were more involved. Um, talk about the close knit of the community and, um, um, and, you know, playing at your a high school gym and, uh, you know, what it was like. Well, go ahead, coach. Well, I was just going to say, uh, you know, the, uh, I've already went through that with the coaches, you know, we, uh, the surrounding coaches, we were all, uh, friends, uh, you know, and, uh, we helped one another, uh, you know, coaches, Bag, borrow, and steal everything, you know, off of friends, off of enemies. It don't make no difference when you watch a team play or you ask, uh, you know, uh, how you how you do this or how you do that. Uh, that's just part of the game. And uh, most coaches don't mind sharing those type of things. Maybe not with you, within your sectional, but, uh, you know, your surrounding coaches, uh, like Joe Todorak, he, he gave me so many ideas, and he'd probably be the first one I'd go to after we won a sectional. Uh, to help me with my next uh, uh, next level, uh, the regional. Uh, John Church, I remember uh, he uh, scouted for me uh, by uh, scouted Austin, who was our first game of Simmons State uh, in 85. And he went and scouted them for me. So uh, uh, it is a close-knit community, and uh, I don't know if it still is or not. Uh, coaches seem like they move around more than they used to. Uh, you know, your two years there, two years there, follow the talent. Uh, not pat myself on the back. That never was uh, important to me. I, I love the community I was in. It fit my lifestyle. Uh, I had good kids. And uh, so with the coaches and the kids around you, uh, I was happy. Yeah, I think from kind of the, the player perspective, I mean, we saw the guys we were playing against you know, on the strip in Jasper and Wendy's or Paco's, or we saw those guys all the time, you know, since third grade, we grew up playing against the same kids. Um, so that, that obviously, you know, breeds some knowledge, maybe contempt, maybe friendship, whatever. Uh, but the other thing that always strikes me in a point of pride is Southridge played at Huntingburg Memorial gym. And that's where the Southridge sectional was. And that, it, it kind of meant something to play in that gym and to play for our team. And I think probably other teams, I don't want to say jealous, but they were like, well, you know, let's go into Southridge. Let's beat them there. Cause it's a big deal. And I think, I, I don't want to say that made things close, but it certainly raised the level of the importance of those games. In the community itself. I mean, as Todd said, not only the players know each other, but, our parents and the community all work together. I mean, uh, Du Bois County wasn't, isn't a consolidation. You know, there's four primary schools there that are still there. And, and, you know, there's such an intermingle between parents, kids, workers, that there's some still some sense of pride that was there that, you know, you wanted to be there and watch and your team wanted to be the ones that won. And, and, and so it, it drove a lot of, 
interest in, in basketball. You know, basketball still had interest from, you know, the early years in Indiana. I think it's lost a little bit of its luster, but it still had a, that strong passion. And, you know, when we went through, what we have 2,500 to the 3,000 season ticket holders, which yeah. is, is just unheard of in a small town of ours where, you know, we'd, we'd drive to, to our, our games in Evansville. We would, we would, it would be a home game for us at, in, in a larger public school because of just the interest level that we had for, for what we did. And, and, you know, it was vice versa. We certainly appreciated the love that we got. And, and I think our, our fans and our friends and the family members all felt that same thing from us that we, you know, we, our team, especially were very outgoing and talked to all of them. And, and it was just a, 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 a real nice, nice thing. And, and, um, you know, it, as you said, it was just great in Southern Indiana, how everybody loves basketball and being together as a community. So. Rick mentioned the fact that uh, the amount of fans that had season tickets, you know, you had to have a season ticket to get in that sectional. Uh, all, all schools, uh, if you didn't have a season season ticket, most likely you didn't get a ticket. And there's many times that uh, you might have one family part lives in uh, Southridge District and another might live in Du Bois District or uh, Jasper District. And uh, you know that when you get beat, they might go out and give your ticket to somebody else just so they can see their team play uh, in the next level. And there's sometimes that uh, a fan said, they're so mad that they lost and they're not going to give their ticket to nobody because nobody gets to it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was just that way in Du Bois County. I mean, uh, with Forest Park, Du Bois, uh, Jasper, and Southridge, it was just uh, unbelievable uh, with the uh, competition and the rivalry among teams as well as fans. And parents, it was just, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was ju uh, uh, funny and enjoyable. Coach, have you started to write your speech? I have not. I, I have said a couple of things. On this. I was watching TV, and you know, that'd be a good thing to say or something like it. Uh, you only get five minutes, so uh, it, it shouldn't be out. I can stumble through that, I believe. <laughs> Hey, I, Coach, I, you need to start loosening up again because I think you should end your speech with a cartwheel. Well, <laughs> you know, I probably uh, see. I probably weighed about uh, two twenty back then. I'd probably break my arms right now <laughs> if, I, if I tried to cartwheel at uh, two fifty. <laughs> uh, Rick Patberg, Todd Yoakum, thanks for joining us, and uh, Coach Gary Duncan, once again, congratulations on your induction into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame, and uh, we, I really appreciate you uh, joining us and you too, guys. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Good, for having you, do, you do a great, great job, Bill. I enjoy listening to you and, uh, and follow you on uh, Facebook and uh, the various mediums. I appreciate it. Thank all of you guys. I'll make sure to get this all to you guys once I get it all edited and all done. Thank you very all right. much. Thank you. Thank you.